Ooh, what's up, guys? Of course, welcome to our Pokemon Wi Fi battle with yours truly, of course, this character. And well, today we're going against Sawdasher in a Lithville region battle. Uh, he's a gym leader there, and I think he's responsible for land. And basically, what that means are Pokemon that are roaming in the field. And well, they sure as hell do. And well, looking into his team here, we got a Pretty, pretty prominent team here, both Nidoking, Arcanine, Flodius, Chestnut, Manetric, and Sissa. And, uh, well, I myself use my Lithio team for this season, this is season 6 that is. And it basically is, uh, Hippowder is not with you or with me this time, but we got Hippowdon, that's my great Pokemon here, and Ditto to counter, if I am not sure about my opponent, I bring Ditto basically to cover uh, Sigilith with Magic Guard, Xydril. Stoutland, Tyranitar, and Rotom for, uh, well, defensive purposes, to be honest. Uh, because my team is fairly, fairly weak to um, water, actually, things that really stands out. So I knew that I needed something that walls water completely, and Rotom is definitely one of those Pokemon that surely stands out. And uh, for good reasons, it's incredibly versatile, and I know why people hate it for that re very reason. And... Um, Basically, this was my first match against Stardasher. We're gonna have two of these, as you guys might know what happened in my first battle. But it was a very, very exciting battle, and it was my first battle in the Lithio. So, yeah, I am. I was really, really nervous, but I was glad I was Stardasher because Stardasher definitely we're you know going back, way back, and he always brings his A game. So, with all this, my guys, let's go. So I was a bit unsure on uh, whether Stardust is going to start off with, so I decided to actually start off with my Ditto. And I'll say that's a fade out from my side, it basically means that, you know, I have no idea what I should do. He's going to start off with Snap Snap, and that is, um, that's bad, that's bad. Um, and uh, I do get his Imposter here, but uh, the thing is, I did not see Sword Dance in this set, so this means that he's a bandit set, so I just want to knock off his band, of course. And of course his retaliation is very very much meaner than his retaliation. I didn't want to speed tie with him here and potentially see him go for a superpower that actually would have taken me out so decided to switch out. He decided to switch out too but he knew he could take a superpower so he went for U-turn and that just dent my Siglyph so bad. So goddamn bad and it's gonna go to Voltage and Voltage here is um, it's fairly mean so I decided to switch out hoping that he went for Electro type move. Hope that he mega evolves so I can steal his um, his lightning rod here. I was I wanted the lightning rod more than anything else, and basically set myself going. But he's gonna mega evolve, of course. But sadly, guys, he went for the overheat, and I think he just wanted to kill me in case I switch out. And um, Trinitor might have been the superior choice, consider that um, that would have dent him much better than this Wingle obviously do and oh yeah he's gonna fall very early on this is not how you play this whatsoever and I lose it too fast but you know it's fine it's fine it's not <laughs> but I gotta go to Rex and Rex is a split set pretty much it's very very bulky and um, basically it, it is for coverage I decided actually to have Ice Beam and Flamethrower on this and I was predicting him to switch out to his Chestnut, and um, I knew I could kind of deal with that in that fashion. And Chestnut, of course, is coming. It is a safe lead, no matter what you how you do it, really. And Ice Beam is gonna land, and Breeze. Yeah, that is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, plus, his buff for the Sandstorm, which means another Ice Beam will kill him. But I was not in. Uh, I think I didn't really want to <laughs> find that out. So, uh, oh yeah, I did say and I did risk that, awesome. But the thing was here, I do have the flamethrower, but due to me being relaxed, I decided that, or I knew that Sissel will outspeed, and a bullet punch will hurt, but like I said, he will outspeed, which means that superpower will kill me. Uh, but you just go for a U-turn, which I did not see coming, but of course, that is gonna kill my Sigilith. And, um, yeah, we are not in a good position whatsoever, and uh, that's really terrible. So he's gonna go over to the Voltage, you know, that's fine. I'm, I have the free opportunity here to go with my Excadrill. Excadrill outspeeds everything, everything on his team here. And uh, I actually have an Air Balloon on this because I thought it could be good for a switch in, but that also means I lack a bit of power, which will actually be showcased here. Uh, so Earthquake does a fair amount here, but it's it doesn't really, it's, a, it's a, at best, um, 
what do you call it, um, a two more hits of those. So I know the next earthquake won't kill, but I know that he's frozen, so you know, I'm kind of fine with this. If he didn't fall out. Yeah, that just happened. That's terrible. That is terrible. That is just the worst, really. And due to my position here, I obviously can't stay in. And I was basically debating here on, you know, what is my next move here. Without Sigalith, I have no real good switch interest. So Rotom is going to be the way to go here. And I'm actually going to speed this up a bit. Because we can't really hurt each other. He will go for Leech City here, you know, get some residual recovery while I do Wisp him. And the funny part about this is, like I said, we can't do anything against one another. It looks like he recovers a bit, but while he does that, I still have their... Uh, oh, what do you call it? Chester Risto on this. And um, the combination is uh, is fairly well here. It's really working out. But as you see, he does recover quite a lot, and I'm forced to hit him. But uh, I decided to actually go for uh, the rest instead. And uh, being that I am in full range, he decided that, alright, Floor just might be a superior choice, and uh, now we continue to normal speed. And of course, Florges is heavily walling me out here. There is not a whole lot I can do from this range, and obviously that looks like that. Um, sorry about the lag also. I have some missed frames, I think, around here, so that might actually look quite terrible. Like I said, don't mind that. It will pawn out and it will work. So I'm going to switch into Rex here, because Rex is... While I can't do a lot of damage, uh, I still can wall this thing out, plus I can set up the sand yet again since it doesn't have anything to stop me from, uh, well, coming in like this, really. So, we're going to go for aromatherapy, just getting away the uh, burn, really, on the chest knot, which is fine. You know, chest knot is still in a range where I probably can deal with it as long as it doesn't outspeed me, of course. And, uh, yeah, this position was really rough for both of us. Uh, I decided I had to actually bring in Stoutland, because... If it went for a Moonblast, I should still be able to retaliate quite heavy. And that was what I was going with. He actually goes for Toxic, and you know, that's even better because that means that I'm gonna get residual damage. But in, in contrast, what Moonblast would have done, it's fine. It really is. And um, he is actually gonna stand with the Floor Jets, which I thought was questionable. But at the same time, I think he thought he could take a hit instead of bringing Scissor and risking to actually get two hit KO before he's going for a Bullet Punch. So, the return is killing the floor, yes. It's just, he's not taking it. I gotta be honest and say that I was surprised too to see this thousand just coming through, as always, doing some major damage. And of course, it's gonna bring the Shredder, basically stalling out the turns and forcing me to go for a return. He could have gone for a Spike of Chill, but I think he was hoping it was gonna switch out. It was basically a judgment call from the both of us, and I decided to risk it. And um, yeah, now the snap nap is gonna come in, and uh, I can't switch out. I just I can't. So it goes for bullet punch. I will live this, but the return is of course not enough. Though I will say, did a freaking good chunk of damage, and that what is all about really. And um, I don't have a lot of options left. I just I don't. With that um, chest not falling out, I really was in a very very rough position, and. Uh, I had no idea what to do next. So it's gonna go to Voltage, not really risking the scissor just yet because it won't outspeed my drilling in worst case scenario. Uh, I'm just gonna go for Hydro Pump. I knew that neutral hit would be significant a lot more than anything else. And while it does about 50%, it's still not enough. And um, he'll get a free turn here to go for whatever he wished for and decide to go for a Volt Switch. Thinking it could predict me, maybe. I should probably go for the Excadrill from that range, to be honest, because that would have made. Well, a lot more sense, I guess, but you know, it is what it is, and it's gonna go to this um, Nido King, basically sacking it, and a Hydro Pump will actually kill it. This is an uninvested uh, <laughs> Rotom, so I was just surprised that he was, that I'll actually take it out, but you know, no matter, no matter. I'm now in a range where I can't go for another rest, and here comes the good boy, which of course is the other dog that is stupidly famous, uh, Arcanine, such a champ, such a monster, and he's gonna go for close combat. I did not want to switch out, because at this range I basically had lost, and I, I was just basically gonna let this thing go, and um, yeah. Because I mean, even if the sensor subside, Arcanine has coverage for both Excadrill and the... Um, 
the Tyranitar close combat is gonna take out me from this range and it got the extreme speed and since I dented my Excadrill uh, early on this game with uh, the chest node, uh, I am not gonna be able to take an extreme speed so this is where this story ends sadly but you know what it's okay it's okay I thought Starlash should play a very mighty game here and uh, me relying on that freeze might actually have not paid in my favor Plus, not having an extra boost on my Excadrill might have even made things worse because it would have been better if I had a 2 hit KO range. A Life Orb would have helped immensely on this set and I did just not have it. And sadly, I will lose the first match, but we have another one which is just as exciting. So, we're just gonna start it straight off the bat here. So yeah, this time uh, my opponent Stalash is bringing Haolucha instead of Florges because Florges did very little previously and he saw that I didn't rely on the status effect that much. So, he's gonna start with the pain! And um, I myself is gonna start with Rex, and what I was doing here was basically, I was gonna play super aggressive, I was basically gonna fodder off my Tyranitar, and this was probably not the, you know, the best matchup, really. And uh, I decided here that, you know, I can go for Ice Punch, hoping it will leech me, but just through the aggressive play, it's gonna take out the Tyranitar. And th that is actually fine, um, because I really want him to feel safe staying in here, the chestnut just did not give a fuck here. And I'm gonna bring my Stoutland here, which is normal gem boost at this time. And I basically, I wanted to go for play rough, making it feel so we can you know, stay in for the next hit. So I did not want to do over 50%. I do over 50% sadly, and I get an attack drop, but he will retaliate of course with Drain Punch, and um, yeah. That's a 50% hit, so he'll recover some more, and I really here thought that, you know, I should go for normal gem boosted return here, and I was banking on this to maybe kill him, but if not, then, you know, that's great, but we're gonna do that normal gem boosted, you know, full <laughs> storing his strength, and goes for a return, and he barely lives that, he barely lives, but that's okay, because now I know he's in a range where I think he can kind of want to sack this Pokemon, or rather, that was what I was hoping for, and I'm gonna bring the Sigilith. And uh, you guys gonna love this, and Stardatcher is gonna hate me forever, because this is the sheep set. And basically, enjoy.
So, <laughs> yeah, you know, with all said and done, um, I'm sorry, so I should too actually rely on this kind of uh, strategy. Um, but, you know, <laughs> I, w I really, really wanted to win. And I, I got that opportunity where I thought you would sack off your chestnut. And it worked. It worked. I, I was... I was banking on that to go down. If it didn't do that, then, you know, I would have lost. And, you know, if I lost like that, I would have been fine because I did sack a lot of Pokemon in the beginning. And, you know, had you stored a crit with the Scissor, you would have won, but the crit just wouldn't come. And um, the direct result of that, I could just keep going. And, uh, yeah, we came to a point where it was not going to happen. It, Sadly, and saw that actually he struggled badly there. And as you saw him in the first match, he did play a very, very good game. And me winning was basically just a response of uh, how desperate you want, one could get when it comes down to a situation like that. So, but really, anyway, I want to thank Stall for that battle. And we got the first badge or orb <laughs> in the bag, the um, land orb. So. That's awesome. Next time we're going up against a guy named Pao. He has a double team battle with War Themed. And I'm going to do my best to keep up. But uh, until then, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day and take care. And remember, of course, sky's limit. Take care, guys. Bye.